big crit. Crit is here. And I know for me, when I was living in Washington, D.C., my junior year of college, I had this roommate named Fred who could just not stop talking about Big Crit. Just what an exciting Southern rap artist he was. He was someone from Atlanta who could kind of carry on the, the torch of somebody like Big Boy and put together raps that were pretty exciting, uh, had that Southern flow, had that swagger, and that you could really get behind. For that reason, when it comes to talking about Big Crit, it is important to go through it on a track-by-track -track basis to figure out what here really elevates what Crit's doing and what here is detractor because, spoiler alert, before we get to the end, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, when going through these songs, there are ones that are pretty exciting, pretty invigorating, although frankly, even the best songs on this album don't really do a lot to lend themselves to you most likely listening to them over and over again. Sure, maybe you'll put them in a playlist, or maybe at some point you'll really feel the need to listen to Big Crit and uh, want to go through some of those back catalog of albums, but most likely you're, you're going to be listening to his earlier work. You're probably not going to stick with this one for very long. To his credit, when the album does start, Crit here is pretty exciting. Put him up, put him up, there I go. Put him up, put him up, there I go. It, it gets you in the mood to really feel the album, to feel the high energy soul beats and positioning him as, again, like a kin to the outcasts of the past, to your, your big boys, your Rick Ross, your, your big guys with the big flow, your killer mics. Uh, he really fits in well with a, a soul beat that, and we'll get into this, does kind of feel like it's treading a lot of the Kanye-esque production that you've heard in the past, but at the same time, gets you pretty pumped up to go, is a good reintroduction to Crit where he seems invigorated, and captures a, a good mood that seems like it could set a, a high energy, a high invigorated pace for the rest of the album. The second track on the album, while it, it does play into some of the skits that you're going to see throughout the album, it basically follows it up with a kind of over-the-top, comical, it, it, it's supposed to be a, a funny skit, but it just ends up being so beleaguered and so, hmm, hoity-toity, waiting for the big crit, that uh, it doesn't ever really land. I've Been Waiting gets us back in the flow, but ultimately uh, is thankfully only a, a, about two and a half minutes, which is kind of an interesting aspect of this album because it's 19 tracks, but under an hour, which means a lot of these songs are either really short interludes or they're not all that long in themselves. So you can say, well, they don't really overstay their welcome, but then at the same time, they also don't really capture your attention or in a lot of time cases, they don't really go anywhere. Make It Easy, conversely, has a beat that really, really works. Uh, it takes that same sort of, you know, Kanye, Twista, Chance the Rapper-esque soul beat, but actually manages to make it work, manages to make it really exciting. And when that that guy finally comes in at the end, like, make it easy on yourself. When he finally comes in, it's uh, it's really satisfying. It actually, uh, it, you know, it, it, it pays the bill for the price of your attendance. Addiction with Lil Wayne. Um, kind of a, a, a crazy song, really, because it sounds, uh, you know, it's, it's as explicit as you would expect Lil Wayne to be. And, um, you know, the female vocalist on the, on the song that kind of dive in, it should be like water, you know, does keep things uh, interesting. Like the, the song is under three minutes, it moves really fast, but it, uh, it almost just feels like a, like a blender of, of mid to late 2000s uh, rap tropes where it feels like it almost could have been released in 2009 instead of 2019 and it wouldn't have changed the style or the substance terribly. Obvious is maybe one of the most boring songs on the album. It reminds me kind of of a, of a Neo track from like Year of the Gentleman, but not quite as good. I Made It is another one of those you know, strong-ish choruses. A motherfucking mate, a motherfucking mate, but uh, it's it's barely over two minutes and, and really starts to get you into this headspace where a lot of these songs just feel almost like rough drafts. Like they may have had a, a good idea or maybe they had a portion of chorus that was going to work and they just sort of ran with it, 
slapped it on the conveyor belt, shipped it out to the people without really taking the time to make it very interesting or ultimately very meaningful. And then there's Every Time, which kind of has that soulish, every time type of art, but the, the problem is it sticks to this really common pattern that you start to see emerge on the album, which is that you have the, the sort of verse chorus action and then there's like an extended little part of the chorus at the end. A lot of this review I've been talking about the beats because for the most part those are the most interesting parts of the album and sometimes the chorus is because some of those hit but Crit himself is surprisingly absent from a lot of this it seems. Where I do feel like he shows off his skills is on a track like Believe where amongst like really skittery trap drum you actually hear uh, his flow complemented in such a way that it kind of has that like that drill like quality or like that pop that snap that you would hope for uh, with a rapper of, uh, of his caliber. The Blue Flame skit followed by uh, the actual song is sort of a, a hurdle that you have to jump over as you go through the album because by the time you've gotten to that point you now have another skit and there's only a handful of them on the album. But with this one, it really feels like all the skits are in sort of a different style, so you don't feel much cohesion between them. It does transition into one of the best songs on the album, which has that sort of uh, Atlanta, strip club, Magic City feel uh, that really gives you kind of the Southern Boss type attitude of the album. But, uh, you know, it, it takes you so long to get to that point. And at this point, when you, when you stop and you think about it and you tell yourself, man, I still have five more songs to go through just to be done with this album. It really starts to weigh heavily on you just how much uh, padding there was on it that just seems to go in every direction. Then there's Learn From Texas, which really has that kind of boss hog, UGK type of feel that as a Texas resident myself, I can tell you it, yeah, it bangs pretty hard. It almost makes you wonder why a song like this, which you know, while it does have a lot of personality, um, you know, this sort of thing that makes you want to, uh, you know, graduate from college and have this as your theme music. It makes you wonder why it's buried so late in the album, again, past multiple skits, uh, past songs like Obvious, which just seem to slow down the beginning of the album a lot. That it makes it difficult to know whether you're actually going to get to this part of the album to fully enjoy it, because it takes so long to get there. Outer Space seems like it would have been right at home on Catalactica. I'm supposed to... One time, one time, I'm supposed to, one time, one time. And Crit's flow, I'm supposed to go to my job, actually does feel uh, really in the pocket, really on point here. Um, but again, it's like, you know, you go from something like Learn From Texas to something like Outer Space, and all of a sudden you're wondering, like, what's the connection between these songs besides the fact that, you know, they have a dope beat or that Crit himself is a good rapper. And we're left with High Beams, Life in the Sun, and Mississippi. And when it comes to High Beams and Life in the Sun, again, they rely so heavily on these sort of outmoded, uh, very simplistic mix of, of verse and chorus, where the chorus is done by an R&B singer. And, and that is really something that, while I can appreciate it as someone who loves those kind of, you know, R&B infected hooks, uh, it really, they feel very forgettable because they, they lean so heavily on those choruses. And, uh, it's for that reason that, you know, those, those last couple tracks um, often run together in my mind. And um, it, it feels like once we hit that blue flame skit, it's like, you know, when are we finally going to get through this thing before you finally end up in Mississippi and can appreciate it. Ultimately, there's a handful of tracks on this album I, I think are really good, and, and most of the beats that are enjoyable are the sped up, chopped up soul ones that, that move at a pretty fast pace. When Crit is relying on R&B singers to carry the weight of these songs, um, like Life in the Sun or something like Obvious, you really feel the weight of how much is being asked of the other artists because Crit himself doesn't show up in such a way to really make them compelling. And in the places where you find big name artists like Lil Wayne or J. Cole, uh, while you might be able to enjoy them, they almost sound more like those artists are doing what they would normally do on their own albums. So you can't fully enjoy them in the context of Crit because Crit just doesn't bring a lot of flavor or personality to this album that to define it as uh, estimably Crit. It feels more like uh, kind of paint by numbers and, and I think you know through listening to me enumerate these tracks you can kind of tell that they're employing the same strategies on them over and over and over again 
uh, hoping for a, a different result, I guess, but it, it just blends the whole album together and also makes it too long to really appreciate or differentiate those parts of the album. So uh, while I can appreciate what Big Curtis brought to the table and, and think back on previous performances of his that I've really enjoyed, these mostly make me want to go listen to his older, more interesting albums, or at least hope that he can bring something to the table next time that will bring a little bit more energy or invigoration, because on this one, at least, it feels like Crit is, again, completely asleep at the wheel, uh, moving through the motions, and, and even a few exciting features can't save things. Uh, so ultimately, uh, you know, my Salmon House rating for this album is going to have to be a catfish. It's going to have to be a catfish. It's uh, strong, supple, but at least for today's album, uh, a bit of a bottom feeder.